at 6. Stay at home in Washington for one more month. Governor Jay Inslee tells people to avoid going out as much as possible until May. Restrictions for riders. TriMet clamping down on just how many people can step foot on their buses as ridership plummets. Plus, financial relief for small businesses. Congress's $350 billion loan program launches today, but the banks set to lend out the help say they are not ready. And lessons from the 1918 Spanish flu, how Portland responded to the global pandemic a century ago, and what it can teach us about our current crisis. KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. Good morning. Yes, you have made it another week. It is Friday. It has been a tough one, but we are glad you're starting your morning off with us. Brenda is working from the square. We're going to have a special closing message for um, from Brenda at the end of our show. Drew is joining us from his home. And this morning, you're sharing how people across the community really came together this week, Drew. In the spirit of our favorite hashtag right now, hashtag KGW together, we did come across some terrific moments this week. We put them all together in a great 90 second clip. We'll have that coming your way in about 10 minutes. Excellent. Thank you, Drew. OK, we want to come together, expand that circle and send it out to Rod. He is bringing you the forecast from his home studio. <laughs> oh, good morning, everybody. Uh, today should be mainly dry radar behind me. You can see this if you go to KGW.com and click on weather and radar. A few specks of rain, actually quite a few of them, up around the north coast and then northward to Seattle. But generally speaking, this should go on to be a day for Portland and Salem and Vancouver that we see very little rain. Our day planner, we're at 40 right now in town in the Rose City, but some of you, good morning Hillsborough, good morning Salem, good morning Estacator, right around the freezing mark. We could get up to 54 today, assuming we get enough sunshine this afternoon. Your weekend forecast coming up shortly. All right, Rod, thank you. We start with news out of Washington this morning, where Governor Jay Inslee has extended the state's stay-at-home order for one more month. It was set to end this week, but will now last until May 4th. The governor says Washington has not seen the worst of this virus, and the extension is needed to keep people home and safe. So in preparation for a surge, CenturyLink Field in Seattle has been turned into a field hospital. So far, 272 people have died in Washington. There are more than 6,500 cases statewide. In Oregon, there is some speculation about when we would be able to reopen businesses. That is after a Seattle research firm put together a number of projections for the Oregon Health Authority. So the firm found if we keep up this level of great social distancing, hospitals would be able to handle the number of COVID-19 patients who will need help, according to one of those projections. If the numbers hold true, they show that even if businesses were opened again and schools kept closed, the expected surge in cases would be something area hospitals could handle. So I'm wondering why not just open the businesses again? That's a great question. I think um, I think we're going to need to look more carefully at this question because of, there are real downsides that I'm aware of of keeping businesses closed. I, th I think that's for our elected officials. Uh, for me, that's the county chair um, uh, who are very much interested in how reliable those models are. The projections show that in a worst case scenario, patients would need slightly more than 150 intensive care unit beds, but OHSA, OHA numbers show there are 291 open and available. The researchers say it appears the infection rate in Oregon has slowed by 50 to 70 percent. But don't let up because here's an update on those latest numbers in Oregon. Two more people have died from COVID-19, bringing the state's deaths to 21. There are now 826 positive cases, but this is out of over 16,000 people who have tested. Of those cases, Marion County has become a hotspot for coronavirus, and based on their population, it has the highest infection rate in the state. Investigative reporter Kyla Boshi looks into why. Marion County, home to thousands of state employees and the state capitol, has become a hotspot in Oregon during the coronavirus outbreak. The latest figures from state health officials indicate Marion County has 164 confirmed cases and four deaths, outpacing Multnomah County, which has more than double the population. 
10% of all tests in Marion County have come back positive, and the data shows every age group is affected equally. I'm 39 and I've never been hospitalized uh, for just like a sickness um, other than like appendicitis in the first grade. And this thing brought me to my knees. I have never been this sick in my life. Joshua Lindley of West Salem is recovering after five days in the hospital. But now his wife and father have also tested positive for coronavirus and his sister is awaiting results after showing symptoms. And just seeing how highly contagious this is in my own household, it seems like it only takes a couple of infected people going into the community to really probably spike the numbers in that community. The outbreak in Marion County has touched all aspects of the community. Bus service in Salem has been temporarily suspended after seven staff members from Chariots Public Transit tested positive. There's also a confirmed case at the Oregon State Hospital and the Oregon State Penitentiary. We have a huge number of people staying home, working remotely. Uh, most of our businesses, uh, restaurants, uh, some smaller service businesses, etc., are closed. Mayor Chuck Bennett said people are taking precautions in Salem, noting there are only a handful of cases within the city limits. Sprawling Marion County encompasses many other small towns and rural farmland. County health officials explain there are several factors contributing to the high number of cases. Marion County had one of the first cases, which was community acquired, meaning the virus had been spreading weeks ago. Additionally, there have been large outbreak clusters nearby, including a veterans home outbreak in Lynn County. Salem Health operates the only hospital in Salem and provides health care to surrounding communities, which could help drive up the numbers. Kyle Aboshi, KGW News. Now to more headlines we're following this morning. TriMet is temporarily limiting the number of people allowed to step foot on buses. No more than 15 people can now be on board a single bus at one time. Drivers will start turning away passengers when buses reach capacity. They'll have to wait for the next one. TriMet recommends giving yourself a little extra time for your commute in case you have to wait. Ridership down more than 63% since February. The Oregon Department of Corrections the prison system announced its first inmate with a case of coronavirus. They are at the Sandy M Correctional Institution in Salem and now will be moved to a 24-hour care facility. An employee at the state penitentiary in Salem has also tested positive. Oregon's governor is calling for a special session so state lawmakers can address the health and economic impacts of the virus. We don't know when that session would start. Governor Kate Brown says she wants to wait for money from Congress's stimulus package to arrive, then they can determine the best way to fill the gaps for unmet needs. Portland Public Schools taking care of its students even while they can't be in class. So far, they've served more than 43,000 meals to kids. And with online learning now the norm, the school is working to get all students access to free Wi-Fi and laptops. Portland Trailblazers fan and local artist Evan McCarthy is raffling off his painting of Carmelo Anthony and the money he raises will go to the Oregon Food Bank to help those affected by COVID-19. So it's all happening through a GoFundMe account. Each entry is 10 bucks. So far, he's raised $2,600 and tonight McCarthy is gonna pick the winner. For more information, you can go to his Twitter handle at EvanEMPDX. That's your morning rush. Well, the Oregon Zoo, it's closed right now, but of course, staff are still there taking care of the animals, working hard behind the scenes. And they've been giving us glimpses of life behind the scenes on the zoo's Facebook page. So the videos range from a lesson about their new red pandas to the adorable little swimming baby flamingos. Only 60 staff members are working at the zoo every day. They laid off a quarter of their staff last week and they're practicing the same social distancing measures with the animals that they are with themselves, paying very close attention to the primates. Now there's preliminary research that looks like non-human primates may be susceptible. And so we are using all of our normal uh, protective measures with all of our primates here at the zoo, and we've ramped those up a little bit. Zoo staff are actually doing a study right now that's kind of fascinating. They want to know if the animals actually miss all of us visitors. So they're taking this unique opportunity to collect some data 
We don't know what that means exactly on how the animals are reacting with visitors versus without. Rod, you had some experience um, this past fall cleaning up at the zoo. I'm sure they miss you. Well, I was cleaning up after the drafts. I'm sure they appreciated what I yes. did for them. I'm not sure if they missed me. <laughs> I'm not sure that we even want to know the answer to that uh, little project they're doing. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some beautiful viewer pics posted on my KGW Rod Hill Facebook page. And I encourage you to do that. Uh, take some beautiful shots out on your walk today, maybe, and then throw them up as a comment on whatever is the, the uh, top post on my page. Here's Waterhouse Park, Nancy Norman. Beautiful picture there. And then uh, Sunset. This is uh, Robert posting this one. Love the colors. Thank you, sir, for posting that on my page. Okay, a little bit of uh, shower activity up around our story in the Long Beach Peninsula. Most of this is offshore. Now, some forecast modeling does bring a weak little push of some showers in late this morning around lunchtime, but I still think the chance of rain is pretty slight for the Rose City in Salem and Vancouver today, and certainly most hours will be dry. We have some freezing frosty spots. Good morning, Hillsboro, 30 degrees. Who else? Who else? How about good morning, Estacada at 31, and Salem McNary Field is now down to 32 degrees as well. Um, it is mainly dry across the area. We have 20s out east. It's uh, not bad, though, out in the East Gorge. The Dows, good morning, 39 is your current temperature. So here we go again, trying our best to get up to about 50 degrees or maybe a little bit warmer today with primarily dry conditions. Vancouver, 54 for the weekend. Tomorrow morning looks dry. And then in the afternoon, the timing is uncertain. We'll call it an increasing chance of eventually getting wet and then showers into Sunday. Nina, back to you. All right, Rod, thank you so much. Hey, let's get a quick check on the roads because we were telling you about an earlier crash on I-205 northbound to 84 west. That has been closed because of a crash. Now this is, if this is part of your commute, you're gonna have to find an alternate route around it, but such light traffic this morning, it's not seeming to affect things too much. Okay. We also have a heads up for you. If you are coming in from the west side, Highway 26 has thick fog in the West Hills. And we are trying to get, there it is. That, there's that camera right at Cedar Hills, the exit there, and you can see all that thick fog. So go slow there this morning, but it is dry out for right now. Okay, after the break, Brenda will be back with some more headlines. What are you covering? Well, we're always on the lookout for positive moments, right, these days? So whether it's people saying thank you to the frontline workers or helping out neighbors, we want to feature that. And there were so many great examples this week. We will have a wrap up of those moments when we come back. And then later we're answering your questions about the coronavirus, like we're seeing more cases even though people are staying home. 